these smaller triangles, and it goes down infinitely if if you do it infinitely. So imagine this. This so this is one way of computing it, one way of doing it, one way of looking at the rule. But um, what I did in the if you look in the, the lecture notes, I talk about iterated function system. So that means, um, well, I'll just do it, and you'll see what it means. So say we start with a point. Uh, say this point here. It could be any point. Um, and we have three possible choices. This is called the chaos game. We have three possible choices of something to do with this point. We either bring it halfway to this point, halfway to this point, or halfway to this point. So let's say we bring it halfway to this point. We go right here, right in the middle. And what we do in the iterated function system, we do this over and over and over again, picking randomly which one of the three points we go halfway towards. So say we go to this one next. We go here, halfway. Then we go halfway to this one. Halfway to this one again. Halfway to this one again. And then halfway to this one. Um, and then halfway to this one. Halfway to this one. You know, and halfway to this one, halfway to this one, halfway to this one. So we just plot these points. And um, the program that I wrote, which is in the handout, does this. It executes this. It just keeps going. And it keeps plotting the points. And eventually what you get is the Sierpinski triangle. It's crazy. So page 8 is the picture of this is on page 8, right? Yeah. So when you do it randomly, it doesn't matter which one you choose. It, no matter what you choose, whenever you do it, score is going to go to the same. So. So if I like started the program again, but now this time, it, since it's random, we're going to have like probably different choices. I'm still yeah. going to make the same triangle. Yeah. Exactly. So he's getting at. Um, say you run the program again, it's going to choose differently. Maybe it'll choose, instead of going to this one first, it'll go to this one first. Say it does it 10 times or 100 times to this one. Um, but it, the program chooses randomly which one to go to. Then it goes to this one and it just chooses randomly. So he asked, even though it's random, will it still generate the same picture? And the answer is yes, it will. Uh, it's crazy. Like, just, just fascinating. And we'll understand this better after we do the next example, which is making a fern, a fractal fern, which is really cool. So let's just look at the code quickly. Um, and think about this. Is the code for the Sierpinski triangle recursive? <coughs> so what it does is, see, so def draw Sierpinski. That's the thing that draws the triangle. Def A, B, and C are these three points. So this is like A, B, Def points equals a list of you know, A, B, and C. Current point is just a, you know, say start at point A. While this statement, while true, means execute this code repeatedly. Just keep doing it an infinite number of times and still, until you stop the program. So it says def next point equals pick from points. And pick from is a function defined above, which pretty much picks at random out of the list that you give it. So that pick from is the thing that picks randomly which one of these to go to. So it says, uh, okay, next point, pick from points. So that gives you a point, and then current point x equals current point x plus next point x divided by 2. So what you're doing is averaging the x coordinates of the current point and the point that you're going to go to next. And if you do that for x and y, what you do is go, that's going halfway between the current point and the next point. That's what that does. Then image.fill pixel that point. So that, that's what plots it on the screen. And the, the picture here is actually, was actually generated by this very program. Um, so it keeps going, keeps plotting it. So here's the question. Is this recursive? Is this thing actually recursive? Because we said a, a recursive function is a function that calls itself. Um, let's hold off on that answer until after we do the next one. Any questions so far? So the next thing we're going to do is the fern. Yeah. 
So recursion is, generally, recursion is something which is defined in terms of itself, something that loops back on itself. Like if you apply that rule, it will become the same thing you started with. If you apply which rule? The recursive rule? Yeah. It'll become the same thing that it started with? Uh, no, not necessarily. Because each time it applies the rule, there's a slight change. With this factorial, it's not just saying n factorial equals n factorial. It's saying n factorial equals n minus 1 factorial. The factorial part is recursive, but it doesn't loop back on itself exactly. There's some change. And with recursive functions, at least, um, so the function is defined, it calls itself. Maybe this, I don't know if this will really answer your question, but say if we didn't have these parts, if the function just was this, if def Fibonacci return Fibonacci of n minus 1, n minus 2, what would happen is, it would call itself and just keep going infinitely, which is a problem. So all recursive functions, in order to do anything, have to bottom out at some point. They have to stop. And that's what this is. Only do this if, x, if n is greater than 1. If, if n is less than or equal to 1, return. So this stops it. So I mean, d does that answer your question? I don't know. You can ask it again if you want. So for the, well, for the triangle, we said that it might be a recursion? It is. Because if it, yeah. Yeah, it has to return to some place that it's bottom out, you say. Right. It, only functions, computer functions that are, di that are recursive need to bottom out. There are other kinds of recursion. Like natural recursions don't bottom out? Um, well, they, they do. Like, Natural recursions don't bottom out. Well, they do have to bottom out eventually. Like, take, for example, a tree in nature. It branches and branches and branches. But eventually, it just gets to a leaf, and it stops branching. There's some sort of program that's, that's executing inside of this tree that's recursive. And there's a certain signal that this program gets when the branch gets to a certain size, I think, or something, that signals it to generate a leaf. So I mean, those kind of recursive processes do bottom out. But this one is actually recursive. We'll see why in a minute. But it doesn't bottom out because it just keeps going forever. Do you mean that when you have like a, maybe like, like you don't sample like practical purposes, like if you match number, you have to go map but only like doing practice, which you can also, you can also do as functions. You can uh, like, and then like you did fictional mathematical world with like functions and computers, and that they can go on forever if you want. Mm -hmm. But if you have to like get a result, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that was that was very well put. So what he's basically said was, if you want to get any real manifestation of recursion, it has to bottom out in order to return you the result. But yeah, you can imagine theoretical worlds where it doesn't bottom out, it goes on for, forever. Actually, Douglas Hofstadter in the dialogue before this chapter does that. A genie has to ask a metagenie, has to ask a metagenie. Did, you, did anybody read that? Yeah, I don't know, but every time it does it, it gets the smaller and smaller into Yeah, the, the time is smaller and smaller. So like, eventually, you know, you just repeat an infinite yeah. number of intensely yeah, small. Yeah, so it only lasts like a finite amount of time. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's really something to think about. Yeah, but keep, that's like theoretical, but, but it is very interesting to think about. So we'll see how this is recursive after we do the fern. So the fractal fern is next, page 9. Um, yeah, this is really, really cool.